Okay, so welcome to uh, Deep Weird Dialogues with me, Dr. Jack Hunter. Um, I'm going to be talking with contributors to this recent book, Deep Weird, about their chapters and some of the ideas contained within them. And for this episode, I'm going to be talking with author and researcher Anthony Peake, whose chapter is an introduction to the egregorial. So Anthony, I wonder if you could just tell us a little bit about what the egregorial refers to and how you think it helps us to understand high strangeness. Right. Hello, everybody. And particularly you, Jack, and thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to contribute to the chapter in the first place. I've been fascinated by what we could call the deeply weird ever since I was very, very young. And one of the great areas of the deeply weird is the role of hallucinations within human experience, exactly what hallucinations are and what is taking place in the brain when we have an hallucination. And indeed, from that, the role of beings or entities that we encounter when we are in hallucinatory states. What is the ontological status of these beings? What are they in reality? Are they just figments of our imagination or are they something greater? And I think that this is a question that's been asked by humanity ever since we've first been interested in the external world, because people know that, you know, at, even, at night they, they dream when they dream the encounter entities and specifically when they're in hypnagogic states and hypnopompic states they encounter entities of one description or another and of course we know that the the religious imperative and the the belief imperative of a lot of early religions and, and folk beliefs involve encounters with entities and other beings that are non-human and in my chapter i'm particularly interested in taking that to its logical conclusion so in terms of my work i always start with the science for me the science is the basis and then what people experience the experiential aspects are then i then attempt to explain those experiences with the science and my model is effectively something i call the egregorial now i use the term egregorial quite specifically because egregorial is from the greek egregorus which means literally watcher and we know from various books in the Bible, particularly the book of, well, non-canonical books of the Bible, particularly the book of Enoch, we know that the concept of the egregores is regularly encountered. Now, for me, I'm interested in knowing exactly what the egregore is, because, of course, we have another concept of the egregore, which are thought forms. The way in which human anticipations of the external environment can can bring about entities that seem to be drawn to us from elsewhere. Uh, and in the chapter, I give various examples, including a fascinating example given to me by uh, the late and great um, uh, uh, theatre director and theatre impresario, Brian Murray, when he experienced an entity that was created by a friend of his who was visiting London in uh, the late 1990s. And as Braham explained to me, this being had independence of him. He didn't expect it, he didn't anticipate it, and it was manifested within his three-dimensional environment. And to me, this suggests that these beings may have another source. They may be created from something else. Now, I know that I know a number of my fellow contributors um, in to this volume, and I know that one of the main themes are going to be entities and encounters with entities. And what I'm suggesting is that these entities do not not only have independence of us, but can be scientifically shown to be so. And I discuss in detail the role of what we mean when we talk about hallucinations, what exactly are hallucinations and indeed how everyday reality that we perceive could also be argued to be an hallucination because both of them are brain generated. And in this, I particularly cite um, the metachoric model of um, McCreary and Green in terms of this, the idea that everything we perceive is an hallucination and these hallucinations can, can override, can, can overlay each other. And that, you know, there's the, the consensual reality hallucination that we consider to be consensual reality. Then there are these more personal um, experiences that we have where these things seem to, to impose themselves. And I think these days we're in a much better position to understand this when we, we discuss virtual reality, yeah. when we're discussing about the interfacing of, of, re of reality and overlaying reality with, with sprites uh composed of, of our computers you know effectively when we we were we were vr headsets 
you know, in mixed reality. So suddenly we're starting to understand that perception is different to what we first think it is, but also what exactly is the science? What is happening neurologically in this? And this, in my chapter, this is what I do. I dig deeply into the neurology, the neurochemistry and the neurological correlates of what is taking place. And I cite some fascinating recent experiments and research that's been done in this field. Yeah, it's a brilliant chapter. One of the things that I find so interesting about this sort of area, one of the things I'm interested in is how these experiences, which we call extraordinary, um, although they, you know, they have extraordinary contents, but actually the processes that we go through to have the experiences <clears throat> are really just extensions of normal processes that we are performing every day so like you say our reality that we perceive now is a hallucination so you know the rest of the these all of these extraordinary experiences are also hallucinations but just as real clearly as reality itself <laughs> so uh yeah it's it's really interesting it's something that uh i think is a, a fruitful avenue for exploration I think particularly if you take into account the final book written by the great late great Oliver Sacks, which he wrote a book on hallucinations. And in this, he describes in great detail hallucinations such as Charles Bonnet syndrome and, and other neurological hallucination states. And clearly, whatever is taking place here, it is a fascinating area of, of inquiry, you know, and I think that probably one of the most important areas of human inquiry, I think, at the moment. And uh, I think we're, we're in an exciting time at the moment. And I think your book and this book that we've all contributed to is of profound importance. And I'm delighted to see that it's already doing so well, which is wonderful, which means there's people out there that are genuinely interested in this kind of thing. So maybe we're working towards the great, um, great paradigm change that we've been hoping and working for for many years. Let's hope yeah. so anyway. It'd be interesting to see what happens next. It is indeed. Well, great. That was wonderful. Thank you very much, Anthony. So if you're interested in checking out Deep Weird and reading Anthony's chapter, it's available from all good online and physical booksellers. Thank you. Thank you.